Never trust a guitar YouTuber that does this is the title and the clickbait and the premise of this video. But what the heck am I talking about? What is this? We all know it's it. It's in your hand, but you can't grab it. But what the heck am I talking about? Well, I got a comment a while back, six hours ago to be exact, as of filming this. And this person asked, does this company review content before publish? Now that we know companies do this, it's hard to trust anything not purchased anonymously with own money. With your own money is what they're trying to say. And I'm going to explore the second part of this before I touch on the first part, uh, because I think it's worth talking about. There is an assumption that if a channel is buying all the gear that they're covering, a guitar YouTube channel or any other review channel, demo channel, whatever you want to classify it as. Like uh, personally, I consider what I do to be a weird hybrid in between demos and reviews, but that's a whole other discussion. But buying the product to demo slash review, does it automatically mean that a video is going to be honest, let alone a more honest representation of that product. And I'm here to tell you, no, absolutely not. Uh, and I just want to preface right away. You shouldn't automatically trust anyone, especially on the internet, especially on YouTube. Be cynical, be critical. Look at everything with a critical eye, a critical ear, Try to figure out what's going on. Try to ask some very critical questions. Like, hmm, are they using amps that sound like the amps that I use? Do they play that I play? Is there something in their signal chain that I don't use? Like, you have to listen. You have to pay attention. You have to think critically to figure out what's going on, to make decisions. Like, you're shopping, right? You're either watching guitar YouTube videos for shopping purposes or entertainment purposes. Like there's a lot of voyeurism going on here. People like to watch just for the voyeurism of, you know, window shopping, something that someone else is having an experience with. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive it home now. I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't trust the channel just because they're buying the product. Because there's still ways they can profit off of you and off of presenting that product as being something better or greater than it is. And I don't, I'm not gonna call out names, but I have seen this over the years. I've seen channels pushing products where I've been like, man, they're, they're not saying everything about this. They're, they're, really, thro they're really showing this through rose colored glasses. Um, so a way that channels can make money off of demonstrating a product incorrectly, even though they bought it with their own money, is affiliate links. And YouTube ad revenue. There's two ways right there. People who put in the hours to make YouTube videos, who put in the days, the weeks, the years that it takes to grow YouTube channels that can pay any bills whatsoever, those people they like to see a return on their investment. They want to make money. Like we all do this out of a love for guitar. No one is doing guitar YouTube just to make money. It's a horrible way to make money. So you have to have love behind it. But there is certainly temptation and opportunity to be dishonest, even though you buy the product. Uh, here, Here's an example from my own experiences. My own experience making content with product that I bought. And it completely comes down to the morals and the ethics of the person running each channel. Uh, I, I, everyone thinks that they work within a perfectly acceptable ethical window, but I, I feel like I'm pretty proud of the ethics of how I operate. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story. Uh, remember years and years ago, the background was gray <laughs> all the way back then. It was probably like three, four, five years ago or something like that, maybe even longer. Uh, the first time I covered 
a, uh, a Firefly guitar. I got their semi-hollow 335 style thing. It was gold. And uh, it was very cheap, very affordable. That's back when they were selling them on Amazon. And I thought it was a lot of fun. It had issues. It had little quirks here and there. And I, I did my best to point them all out to inform the audience of what I received and potentially what they could expect. And I got a great first impression from that first guitar from Firefly. And as a result of that, I can't remember the exact numbers, but my Amazon affiliate links for that guitar blew up and I made a nice chunk of change off of that video. Uh, I could easily say it was probably over $1,500. I made from people buying that guitar off my link and I got my cut from the Amazon affiliate link. Um, then because that did so well for me, I bought more Fireflies because I was like, that was great. I'd love to replicate this. I'd love to cover more guitars from a company that's making a guitar that feels fun to me. Maybe the other guitars are fun. So I think I ordered like two or three, maybe four after that. And every single one after that first one felt like a bummer to me. And I just, kept feeling more and more disappointed. And I kept feeling more and more like, no, I, I hope people don't buy these because the quality just kept slipping and slipping. And then soon after that, uh, Firefly had a whole drama where they had a whole run of guitars where the frets beyond like the 11th fret or whatever were all misplaced. And I didn't buy anything from that run. But at that point, when I saw that drama going down, it was like, I, I can't cover these anymore but I was still seeing other channels covering them, guitars from that run, signing off on them and saying, oh, these are great. Oh, you go buy all of these. Because you can make money convincing people to go buy stuff, even if you purchased it yourself. And to the best of my knowledge, Firefly wasn't sending guitars out to anyone because they're a company that works with very slim profit margins. Any, any guitar company that's selling guitars in that like close to $200 range, it's pretty rare that they send anything out to anyone because the profit margins are, are so slim. They're not gonna pay for demos. They're not gonna send stuff out. It does happen, but most of them don't. A lot of these channels that are covering $200 things, we're, we're buying them a lot, a lot of the time. We're hoping to find something good that we can recommend because the affiliate links do make us money. That's the reality of it. Um, and I'm not trying to say that any channel that puts it out there and says, Hey, I buy everything. So, you know, I'm honest. I'm not trying to say that they're inherently dishonest, but I'm, I am saying that just because a channel buys something to cover it doesn't mean they are being honest. Doesn't mean they aren't trying to just gather purchases so they can get their cut. You have to be critical. You have to be cynical. You have to listen with your ears, look with your eyes, use your senses and your common sense to try to figure out what's going on. Try to figure out, has this person shown details where there could be issues? Are they glossing over issues that could be called out. Did one channel find issues and another didn't? It might just mean that one channel got a bummer guitar and the other one didn't. There's a lot of QC variation in the budget guitar scene. Like recently I covered, it's funny because this uh, this comment actually came from a Fesley video. I covered two Fesley guitars. Both of them were really great out of the box. And then a fellow guitar YouTuber uh, recently did a video where they got a guitar sourced to them from Fesley and they had issues out of the box. And him and I both thought it was very interesting that that happened because it shows that those guitars weren't cherry picked. It's a luck of the draw sort of thing from these brands. Also, when you're on the creator side of these things, you can have a strong, a strong suspicion that a guitar is not cherry picked when the order is completed and it shows up a day and a half later from an Amazon fulfillment warehouse, there's no one sitting in an Amazon warehouse cherry picking $200 guitars for YouTubers. It, it just, that doesn't make any sense logistically. So anyways, yeah, like 
the burden on on my heart and the, the the thing that's been rolling around in my head is that you shouldn't trust anyone, which is is incredibly grim. And I'm saying that as someone who like I'm I'm personally invested in being as trans as, as transparent and as trustworthy as I can be with you, the audience, because like I, I get to have this living because of you guys. That's the reality of it. I get to do this because I have earned many of your trusts. Some of you watch me for you know hate watching reasons, which is fine too. Don't stop hate watching. Maybe you don't trust me at all. That's fine too. Be critical, always be critical and cynical. Um, but earning your trust is a big part of what I strive to do around here. It's a big part of what other channels try to do. But that doesn't mean that there's not temptation. It doesn't mean that there's not opportunities to be dishonest for profit. Even when you're creating content that is not paid for by the manufacturer or a retailer, even when you're creating content where the product has not been provided by the manufacturer or a retailer, there's opportunity for profit and dishonesty. So it's really not about the circumstances of how the video got made. It has to do with the ethics of the creator. And I'm always open to questions. I, I, I try my very best to answer these sorts of questions very sincerely. And I, I replied to this commenter very sincerely. Um, let, let's, let's rewind and address the first part of that question. Does this company review content before published? This is another, this is an ethical issue that myself and other guitar YouTubers, we like to talk about. When we have events, we spend a lot of time hanging out, drinking beer, uh, shooting the shit, and discussing the ethics of what we do because it's heavy on our heart, it's in our minds, it's something we watch out for, it's something we care about because we're consumers too. And we want our industry to be sustainable for us. It wouldn't be sustainable if the vast majority of us were being dishonest. It just wouldn't work because you guys would buy stuff and be like, hey, this is they clearly lied about this. Clearly something is up and then the whole thing would fall apart. Um, but companies, brands, builders, retailers, clients, customers, whatever you wanna call them, reviewing videos before they're published. I have a pretty strong policy against that, and I have forever. It's actually publicly written out on my rates page, which you can search for and find. We have a link for it down in the description of every video because I want brands to be able to find my rate information and hire me. It's what I do, but you can find it as well. You can see what I charge for demos. As of filming this, I just raised my rates for summer because I actually want to work less. <laughs> I My kids just got off on summer break and I want to spend time with them. I want to take my kids to the beach and stuff like that. I work really hard the rest of the year. And I'm like, what if I could buy myself a little extra time this summer by raising my rates? So I just raised my rates recently to $800 for unboxing videos and uh, $1,600 for uh, my full detailed demos. Basically an unboxing video represents about a day and a half to two days worth of work for me. And the detailed demos, they represent anywhere from three to four days worth of work for me. That's labor. It's emails, it's shooting, it's reshooting, it's editing, it's all the behind the scenes stuff. This is a job. This is how I make money. Those are the rates that I charge. Oh, and also I have a small builder discount. I don't advertise what it actually is, but I raised my rates to the point a while back where it's like, I don't want to squeeze out the small builders. So I have a very discounted rate for small builders that represent people doing like the real skunk works in their garages, their sheds, even small workspaces and stuff like that. They're building pedals on their kitchen table and they want to have a demo. I don't want to charge them the, the same rates that I charge the Sweetwaters and the Fenders and the Yamahas of the world. It doesn't make any sense. So the big companies subsidize them. Okay, that was a whole side tangent. <laughs> 
what was I talking about again? So anyways, if you went to that rates page, you would see that I've written out underneath each package that I don't provide videos for review before they're published. It's just something that I don't do. I think it's unethical. And if a company asks for that and I explain to them why they why I don't do it and then they come back hard and push against that, that's a red flag for me. And it shows me that I probably don't wanna work for them. Sometimes I can educate them and get them on the same page, but there are companies that I haven't worked with because they didn't get it. And a lot of other channels feel the same way. There are exceptions. There have been times when I provided videos for a brand, a builder to see beforehand, but usually, typically, it's because they're already my friend and I wanna show them you know, the fun loop jam that I came up with or something like that. Or maybe I have a question about the product and I'm trying to figure out captions to describe what's actually going on. So I'm looking for clarification or something like that, but it's pretty rare. And it's for very sincere reasons why I would do that. Uh, but then again, every channel works differently. Every channel does things differently. So I'm sure it's confusing for the brands out there to try to figure out what they should and shouldn't be asking for from creators. I wish it could all be standardized, but I kind of don't because then I'd probably have to do things that I wouldn't be comfortable with. Every channel gets to do their own thing. So anyways, I'm, I'm curious what you guys think about all this. Um, I, it probably sounds like I'm throwing a lot of creators under the bus. I'm saying not to trust us. I'm saying to be cynical, to be critical. But you should be anyways. You're on the internet. Who knows what's real? <laughs> I get it. I totally understand it. Like some, sometimes I get comments from people where it's just like a head scratcher. Like really this is the thing that, that someone's gonna complain about and find some sort of issue with. And then a lot of times it's like, I get it. I get why someone would be critical about this element of the industry. If I wasn't doing this, I would be critical too. And I was critical before doing this. I'm still critical now. <laughs> So thanks for indulging me. Thanks for indulging this conversation, this rant that I've been on a little bit aimlessly here. Um, looking forward to the comments. Uh, I know that other channels are doing videos right now. It seems to be the season of the year where channels are making trust us videos. And I'm not doing that. I'm saying don't trust us. <laughs> But also like, I get, I get why the other channels are doing it. We get all these comments all the time and it wears on us. And you hit this breaking point where it's like, I'm just gonna address this. I'm just gonna talk about this in a video. Cause that's my way of talking to the world in videos. So I get why like people like Henning and Fluff, people who are my friends have, have made these videos. I've made videos like this in the past, trying to explain how I work and how other channels work and stuff like that. And it's, it's important. Like we're always gonna talk about this stuff. We don't all have, like uh, Steve and I have the podcast where I can rant randomly about things like this, but not every channel has like a podcast part of what they do. And so they make standalone videos uh, when they feel it's necessary. Also, we're all experiencing the summer slump right now. <laughs> Views go down in the summer. You gotta keep those clicks up. We're all trying to run a business over here that's powered by clicks. So videos like this, they do get views, hopefully, fingers crossed. You know, I, I'm hoping to get clicks. I'm always hoping to get clicks, but I'm also hoping to provide clarity. So yeah, I'm rambling all over the place now. This isn't very co cohesive at this point, but whatever, you know. Who knows if you even made it this far in the video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, click all the affiliate links in the description if you want. It's a great way for creators to make money. Uh, I've explained this many times before and I'll do it again right now. You don't actually have to buy the thing that a creator has linked to with their affiliate links for them to make money. I, I know the vast majority of you out there are shopping on Amazon or Sweetwater or Guitar Center or Musician's Friend, et cetera, et cetera, Toman, et cetera, et cetera. 
et cetera. And if you follow our affiliate links, you click them and then you don't buy the thing, it's fine. Because if you go back to that site, sometimes days later, your, your cookie is still open. Your cookie window is still open. You're still in this like time frame where if you buy anything that you want, literally anything, then the creator who generated that link will get a cut. So if you click on say my reverb.com link for like some fuzz pedal or whatever, and you go like, oh, huh, that's interesting. And then you don't buy that fuzz pedal, but three days later you go and buy uh, you know, I don't know, like an old Godden guitar or something like that. Some weird old guitar that you wanted. I'll get a cut of that and you'll be helping me heist money <laughs> away from reverb.com or Amazon or whoever. In a way, affiliate links are actually a really honest way for us to make some money. So, you know, something to think about. Like I said over and over again, if you have any questions, that's what the comment section is for. And uh, I'll, I'll do my best to answer everything as honestly and sincerely as I can. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded.